Good evening, this is Pastor Dominique from Evander Revival Center. Welcome to our weekly live broadcast here on Facebook. It's good to have you with me tonight as I share the Word of God. And I want to inspire you in your faith. I want you to be strengthened by this Word because I believe God has prophetically laid a Word on my heart that will, you know, speak and minister to you. No matter what situation or circumstance you might be going through, this Word is for you tonight. So get ready to receive some revelation from God's Word. I want to say welcome to all of you that are coming online right now. I see we've already got people online. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. The reason why we a little bit later is because there has been load shedding in various parts of South Africa and we've got people that watch from all over and we want to accommodate everybody. So that's why we are a little bit late with our broadcast tonight. But nonetheless, we are going to get into the Word of God. We're going to do a little bit of Bible study and I believe that this Word is going to minister to you. So tonight we are in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 and I want to read from verse 14 down to verse 18. Listen to what the Bible says. 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 14 down to verse 18. Okay. Listen to what the Bible says. 2 Kings chapter 6. Welcome. It's good to have you all online. Let me greet some people. Welcome Renee Stoffbach. It's good to have you online. Mandy Mayer, God bless you. It's good to have you online. Willem Rabi, welcome. Rian Loebscher, welcome. Beverly, it's good to have you online. God bless you all. It's good to have you with me tonight. feels good to be with the saints, the children of God. Okay, let's get into the Word of God. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14. Therefore, he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. The servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these, this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Powerful, powerful passage of scripture with so much revelation. So let's get into it. Second Kings chapter six. We see in this passage of scripture how the nation of Israel is at war with the nation of Syria. And as they are at war with one another, the Syrians who are the enemies of Israel are frustrated. In fact, the king of Syria is desperately frustrated in this passage of scripture. The reason being, there's a prophet in Israel, Elijah, who gets prophetic insight from the Lord. And when he gets prophetic insight, he warns the Israelites and the king of Israel where to avoid the enemy, where the enemy was strategically planning to attack the Israelites. So he would warn the Israelites and as a result, the enemy was not successful in the attacks against Israel because uh, Israel always avoided their attacks or came away from their attacks as a result of the warnings that Elijah was giving them. Now, Elijah in this passage of scripture represents for us the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is alive and the Holy Spirit is a reality and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. It's the third person in the Trinity of God and the Holy Spirit wants to come and live and make his dwelling in your heart. The Holy Spirit wants to move in your life. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you things, show you things. And as Elijah is symbolic of the Holy Spirit in this passage of scripture and he warned Israel of the attacks of the enemy and where not to go to avoid war. So the Holy Spirit today wants to minister to you and me 
to show us where the enemy wants to attack us, to give us insight prophetically, so to speak, so that we can avoid conflict, so that we don't go to certain places, so that we don't fall into certain traps. Because the enemy is real. The enemy is real. You and I have got an enemy, and it's the devil. And the devil works through his demons, and he works through people. And he's constantly attacking us. He's constantly coming against us, us as children of God. But the Holy Spirit can minister unto us and show us what we need to do and how we need to do it. If we are willing to just listen and be obedient to his leading. That's why Paul encourages us in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Where he says that we must walk by the Spirit. Now I wish I could tell you that every person that calls themselves a Christian lives by the Spirit. But that's simply not the truth. I have seen how Christians can live according to their own will or according to their flesh. And as a result, there comes a lot of pain, a lot of frustration, a lot of tension and conflict. But you see, when you are led by the Spirit, you can avoid a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of tension, a lot of disappointment. I'm not saying that you won't experience problems. In fact, in this passage of Scripture, we see how the enemy comes against the children of God. But Elijah is there to constantly guide them and show them how to avoid the enemy and how to avoid the attacks of the enemy. Could it be possible that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you and reveal things unto you so that you don't constantly go through pain and suffering? You know, it is tough enough in this life to live life just as it is. We've got so many things that are against us. Not just in the nation of South Africa, but in life in general. We've got so much circumstances that come against us. And why do we want to make life more difficult by making decisions that are outside of the will of God for our lives? Why do you want to live life frustrated when God wants you to be blessed? Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. You know, when you live the abundant life which Jesus ordained you to live, no matter what the problem is, no matter what the circumstances, you are constantly in a place of peace. In fact, Jesus tells us in John chapter 10 verse 27, he says these words, My sheep know my voice and they listen to my voice. So Jesus is saying, actually, I've got those that follow me and he likens himself unto being a shepherd and those that follow him as being sheep. And he says, I speak to them and they listen to me. I speak to them and they listen to me. You see, throughout scripture, God is constantly trying to get the attention of his children. He's constantly trying to communicate with those that follow him. The question is not. Is God speaking? The question is, are we listening? John chapter 16 verse 13, Jesus said, When the Spirit of truth comes, which is the Holy Spirit, He will show and reveal to you all things. You see, you don't have to be super intelligent. You just need the Holy Spirit. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have all the solutions. But if you've got the Holy Spirit, He will lead you. He will show you what to do. He will give you guidance. That's why Jesus says in his word in Revelation chapter 2 verse 29, Let he who has an ear hear. All of us have got ears. Think about that. All of us have got ears. We've all got ears. You've got ears. I've got ears. But did you know you can have a physical ear and still not hear what God is saying? Spiritually, so to speak. So more than just hearing physically, we need to hear spiritually. We need to hear with our spiritual ears. Are you hearing what God is saying? Are you listening to what God is saying? God wants to show you how to get through that situation. How to overcome that problem. God wants to show you where the enemy is coming against you. And what you can do. And he wants to give you revelation in that area. But are you sensitive to the voice of God? Are you sensitive to what God is trying to tell you? Now. The king of Israel and the Israelites listened to Elijah. And this made them successful. You see, success begins when we are obedient to the voice of God. When we are obedient to God's word. When God speaks, we listen. That is the foundation for success for the believer. For the child of God. 
Now, we see in this passage of scripture how the Syrians are frustrated and the king of Syria is angry. In fact, he concludes there must be a spy in his army that's going and telling the Israelites what he's doing or what they are planning. Because how else can you explain that um, the Israelites are constantly coming away and getting away and, you know, constantly... The uh, the Syrians aren't successful in their attacks against the Israelites because the Israelites are figuring out their plans even before they do those plans or before those plans come into action. So the Syrian king asks his men, his army, who of you are spying? Who of you are going and telling the Israelites our plans, our tactics? And his men say, it's none of us. In fact, it's the prophet Elijah. And Elijah is so accurate in what he predicts and what he says that he even tells the king of Israel the conversations that you are having in your inner room. In other words, the conversations, the private conversations that you are having, king, this prophet knows about it. That's how accurate he is. And this king gets angry and he sends people from, he, from Syria to find out where Elijah is and they find out that Elijah is not too far. He's 22 kilometers from Syria in a city called Dothan and he sends his whole army after one man. He sends his whole army to go and surround the city of Dothan. Why? To take out Elijah. Now the enemy is coming. An enemy, a force, is coming against Elijah, the man of God, the servant of the Most High. Why is he coming against Elijah? Simply because Elijah is effective. When you are effective for God, the enemy will fight you. The enemy will come against you. The enemy always fights those that are effective for God's kingdom. When you start meaning business with God, watch out, the enemy's coming for you. I wish somebody could have told me this when I came to salvation. That if you are effective, if you are faithful, if you do what God tells you to do, the enemy, the devil will attack you. He will attack you. And the evidence of the attack is evidence of being effective. Sometimes we buy into this notion that if we are faithful... And if we are good, and if we are doing what we need to do as Christians, well, then we won't be attacked and the enemy won't come against us. But sometimes the opposite is true. The enemy will attack you if you are effective. And Elijah has got now opposition as a result of being obedient and listening to God and serving God and helping Israel out. So the very next morning after this Syrian army had surrounded the city of Dothan, the Bible says that the servant of Elijah woke up and what he saw alarmed him. He looked out beyond the city walls and he saw the Syrians surrounding the city with thousands of horses and chariots. There was this massive, massive army surrounding the city. And he was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed by what he saw. He looked and he saw the enemy surrounding them. And what does he do? He goes to the man of God. He goes to Elijah and he says to Elijah, we've got trouble. The enemy surrounding us. What are we going to do? Notice his response to the enemy to the opposition. It's a response of fear. How can I say that? Because when Elijah speaks to him, he says these words, fear not. Why is Elijah encouraging him not to fear? Because fear was evident in the tone, in the voice of the servant of Elijah. And you know, fear comes against us every so often. Every so often we are attacked with fear. We are attacked with anxiety. You know the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of power, love 
and of a sound mind. Sound mind means you've got peace. It means that you are peaceful, that your mind is calm. You know what we need today? We need calmness. We need to be at ease. But that can only happen when you allow the Spirit of God to work through you and to bring you comfort and to bring you counsel. Did you know that fear is a very real thing? It's in fact a spirit, the Bible says. It's a spirit. And that spirit comes every so often and he knocks on the door of our hearts. And he wants us to open up the door so that he can come in and create havoc and create anxiety in our hearts. Create havoc and anxiety in our lives. Do you know how many people are landing up in hospital today as a result of mental illness? As a result of being overwhelmed emotionally, mentally. Do you know how many people are going into rehabs, not for drugs, not for alcohol, but because they are worrying. They are struggling with depression. You see, the enemy is attacking us today. He's attacking us in our minds. He's coming against us in our emotions. And I feel I'm speaking to someone. God did not intend for you to walk around defeated and depressed. It does not belong to you. Depression does not belong to you. You are more than an overcomer through Christ Jesus. This servant was overwhelmed because what he saw overwhelmed him. And I want to tell you, as long as you're going to live by what you see, as long as you're going to live by looking at your circumstances, you're going to live a life that is depressing. You're going to live a defeated life. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. We live by what God tells us in our spirit, by his promises in his word, not by what we see, not by looking at the circumstances, not by looking at that which comes against us, not by looking at the opposition of life. Child of God, don't live by what you see. It's going to keep you limited in your faith. It's going to keep you in a place of defeat and mediocrity. It's time to come up higher. Elijah speaks the language of faith in the scripture. Do you know that we've all got a spiritual language? One person speaks the language of fear and one person speaks the language of faith. The person who speaks the language of fear, you can hear. They are worried. They are burdened. Life is so unfair. They don't know what they're going to do. They are hopeless. They don't see chance for tomorrow. But when a person speaks a language of faith, they testify about the goodness of God. They're grateful for what God is doing. They're worshiping God. They're praising God. They've got a positive report. I did not say if you've got a language of faith, you don't have problems. No, but in spite of the problems, you, you are busy boasting about what God can do and what God will do. Child of God, God wants to do a work in your life. God wants to do a work for you and through you. The question is, can you receive what God wants to do? Can you receive what God wants to do right now? Fear not, Elijah said, for those that are for us are greater than those that are against us. Ha, the victory is in the spirit. If you could just see in the spirit, you could see that there is victory. You could see that there is breakthrough. And I feel that there is revelation in that statement. Because in other words, if you could just perceive in the spirit what's taking place, it will begin to manifest in the natural. Did you know that there is a spiritual realm? It's a supernatural realm. It exists beyond the year and now, and it's more real than the natural realm. And whatever takes place in the spirit manifests in the natural so if we could just see what God is doing in the spirit, what God has given us in the spirit, it will begin to manifest in the natural. In other words, you might have symptoms in your body. But if you could just stand upon the word by the stripes of Christ, you are healed. Guess what will happen? Your healing will begin to manifest in the natural. Yeah, but pastor, the doctor said so and so. Listen. I've got respect for doctors. In fact, I believe God has raised up many of them to minister unto us and to help us to live healthy. In fact, the writer of the Gospel of Luke was a doctor. He was a physician. I've got no problem with the doctor. But I have got a, a problem when the doctor's report contradicts God's word. We have to stand upon God's word. 
The doctor's report is not the final report. What God says is the final report. We must use wisdom. We must listen to the doctor. We must do what we can. But it should not be the limitation to what God has promised, what God has said. If you can see it in the spirit, if you could perceive it, if it could just fall in your spirit, guess what? It's a matter of time before it starts to become a reality. It's a matter of time before you see it begin to take place in your life. Could it be that you are looking at the circumstance, you are looking at that problem, you are looking at that situation and you're so fixated on it that you can't see beyond that and God wants to show you, I've got greater things in store. In fact, I'm busy working behind the scenes. I have ordained you to be victorious. I've ordained you to overcome. I have ordained you to come out on top in this situation. You will not be defeated. I, f- I feel I need to say that to somebody. You will not be defeated. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I don't care what people have said. I don't care what people have told you. I don't care how you even feel. God's word is yes and amen to those who believe. And if you say, I'm willing to take God at his word, God is saying, you know what? I see that as faith and that pleases me and I will bless you as a result. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Those who come to God must believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. In other words, God loves to reward his children. He loves to bless his children. He loves to give good things unto his children. Come on. If you receive God's goodness tonight, type in the comment section. I receive the goodness of God. Make that declaration. I receive the goodness of God. I'm not going to be limited by my circumstances. I'm not going to be limited by the voice of man. I'm going to come out on top because God has given me victory and it's in the spirit. So what does Elijah do in this passage of scripture? When he hears about the army, the enemy that's surrounding the city, what does he do? He immediately prays. You see, that was his reflex. His reflex was to pray. Reflex is that which you do when you're under pressure. Under pressure, he starts praying. It reminds me of a scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 8. When David was under pressure, what did he do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. What am I trying to say? You could walk around looking at the situation, pondering the situation, wondering about the situation, or you could go into a place of prayer. You can worry or you can pray, but you can't do both. You can worry about the situation or you can pray about the situation. So if you are sitting up at night and you can't sleep, it is an opportunity to pray. Right there under your breath while you're lying there in bed. Pray. Say, Lord, I bring the situation before you. It's burden. It's a burden for me. It's weighing me down. But Lord, I'm putting my trust in you. I've got faith to believe that you will come through for me. I've got faith to believe that you will give me the breakthrough I need. Come on. I'm telling you tonight, it is time to pray. It is time to call out to God. Elijah prayed. That's what he did. Elijah did not become fearful. He did not become anxious. He did not go and look Who can he call to help? He did not even see what are we going to do? How are we going to escape? How are we going to get out of the city? What did he do? He called out to God. He started praying. But notice, as he prays, he prays a prayer. And his prayer reveals something. It brings revelation. He didn't pray, God, take away the enemy. He didn't pray, God, remove the problem. He didn't pray, God, please stop the opposition. You see, that's how we pray oftentimes. God, please take away this problem. God, please stop this situation from going any further. God, please, please, please. We, we pray. And it's good to ask. It's good to ask. I want to encourage you to keep asking God. But he doesn't pray for the problem to disappear. He prays that the servant can open his eyes to see what he sees. In other words, He prays that the servant who's spiritually blind, so to speak, would be able to see in the spirit what he sees. And this reveals the real problem. The real problem was never the Syrians, was never the enemy. The real problem was spiritual blindness. Could it be your real problem 
is that you're not seeing or perceiving what God is doing. Could that be the problem? That you're not seeing and perceiving what God is doing. That's why the Bible says, I believe it's Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Without vision, the people perish. Without vision, the people perish. People perish for a lack of vision because they can't see in the spirit what God is doing. So the prayer we need to pray before we pray, God, take away the problem. Before we pray, God, please stop the enemies. We need to pray, God, let me see what you see. Give me your perspective. Give me your insight. Give me your vision. That I may see this through your eyes. God, open his eyes that he may see. And at that moment, the servant's eyes were open and he saw a greater army than that of the Syrians. He saw a supernatural army of heaven's angels, the heaven's hosts that surrounded the army that came against Elijah. And there were chariots and horses. It was magnificent. It was something to behold. These were heavenly beings. No wonder Elijah wasn't fearful. Why? Because he saw things in the spirit. You see, the problem is sometimes we are busy looking at things in the flesh. When we should be looking at it in the spirit. You see, that is just revelation for somebody already. Even if you don't listen to anything else I say, that's already a word for you. Stop looking at it, at it in the flesh. Start looking at it in the spirit. But notice, even though he prayed, the enemy still came against him. Did you know you can pray and you can be faithful and you can stand upon God's promises and still experience attacks? You see, oftentimes God does not remove the problem because that is an opportunity for God to move. That is an opportunity for God to work. Because how else is God going to work? How else is God going to move in your life if there's no problems? Think about that. How will you ever get a revelation God can provide if you don't go through lack? How will you ever get a revelation that God can heal if you never afflicted in your body? I'm not saying that God gave you that affliction, but oftentimes it happens. And it's these problems that give God the opportunity to move. It is these problems that bring us a revelation of what God can do and what God wants to do. But it starts by us seeing with our spiritual eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. So the army comes down and as they come to Elijah, Elijah prays once again. And he says, Lord, strike them with blindness. And as they are struck with blindness, they are not struck with physical blindness, but blindness not able to discern. They are blind in a way that they can't discern that Elijah is the man that they eventually are looking at. Elijah is busy speaking to them and Elijah leads them out of the city of Dothan and takes them right to the king of Israel. And when the Syrian army follows Elijah blindly, so to speak, spiritually blind, you see, where does deception start? It starts with spiritual blindness. Do you know that Jesus, more than warning us against the devil, more than warning us against the world, more than warning us against demons, he warned us against deception. It is the number one warning right throughout the New Testament. Watch out that you're not deceived. Watch out that you're not deceived. How can you and I avoid being deceived? How can you and I avoid being in the place where the church of Laodicea was in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 17, where they were spiritually blind? How can we avoid... By having eyes to see, by praying, God, open my eyes to see. Help me to see what you see. Give me your vision. Give me your perspective. Now this army is led right into the hands of the king of Israel and the army of Israel. And when they come there, Elijah prays and he says, Lord, open their eyes that they may see. And when they open their eyes, they see they are captured and they are in the hands of Israel. Without a sword being drawn, without bloodshed taking place, without there ever being a fight, 
Elijah delivers the whole army of Syria into the hands of the king of Israel. And the king of Israel in this passage of scripture asks Elijah, should I kill them? And Elijah says, no, give them bread and give them water. You see, I told you just now, Elijah is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to lead us. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you. So Elijah tells him, you must handle this with peace. Don't kill them. Give them bread. Show them goodness. Give them favor. And as a result, listen to this, as a result of the king listening to Elijah and doing what he says, peace came to Israel for that season. And the Syrians, the Bible says, left Israel and they did not come back into the land of Israel for that time. You see, they went back to the king of Syria and they said, you know what? We were there and the Israelites were good to us and the Israelites gave us bread and the Israelites gave us water. We're not going to war with them anymore. You see, when you start following the Holy Spirit, he gives you solutions and he paves a way to peace and restoration. Just follow the Holy Spirit. You might not see a way, but the Holy Spirit can make a way. The Holy Spirit can show you what to do. He can bring healing where there's been devastation. He can bring healing where there has been destruction. Restoration where there's been destruction. You just have to follow the Holy Spirit. Elijah brought peace and calmness between the conflict between Israel and Syria. All because the king listened to him and they showed goodness. They showed goodness unto their enemy. I've come to tell you. The fight you think you have to fight, you don't actually have to fight it. If you could just listen to the Holy Spirit. Stop wasting energy, time and money. Fighting fights that God never ordained you to fight. Don't drain your energy. Going through conflict and tension which God never ordained you to go through. But listen to His voice. And see the victory in the Spirit. And if you could see it and perceive it, it will begin to manifest in your life. I leave you with that word tonight and I pray that it speaks to your heart. Let me pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and opportunity that I have to minister your word. I pray, Lord, for every person that is watching right now, Lord, that you, Lord, would open their eyes, so to speak, to hear what you are saying in the season. Lord, I pray that you'd open up their spiritual eyes to see what is taking place in the spirit, how you are working in their midst, in spite of their problems, in spite of their situation. I pray right now, Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, lead us, lead me, lead my brother and sister. Lead us that we will be sensitive to your leading, that we will know what to do and how to do it. So that we will not constantly come into conflict and tension and under pressure as a result of being disobedient. Help us when the enemy comes against us not to be overwhelmed with fear, but to be strengthened by faith. I pray bless every brother and sister that's watching right now. I pray this all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I want to invite you right now in the name of Jesus. To receive him as your Lord. If you say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to make my life right with God. There is no greater decision you can make on this side of eternity than giving your heart to Jesus. Would you pray this prayer? Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I give you my life. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I admit I need a Savior. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I confess you died on the cross. And I confess you have risen from the grave. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I pray, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to do your will. I pray this in your wonderful name alone. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I believe you've received the gift of salvation. Get into a good Bible-based church. Keep Jesus first place. Keep God first place. Spend time reading and praying, reading the Bible and praying on a daily basis so that you can grow in your faith. And as you do this, God will begin to take you places you could never ask, dream or imagine. Doesn't mean you won't have problems, but you'll be able to overcome. That's all that I have for tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. God bless you. I want to greet everybody that's online. So once again, welcome to Mandy Mayer. God bless you.
Beverly, it's good to have you online. No, Umi, Lofty, Eaton, it's good to have you online. And Aretha Fori, God bless you. Bernard Brophy, Evangelist Bernard Brophy, it's good to have you online. God bless you, my brother. Hendriet, welcome. Evold Bomo, my brother, God bless you. Rene Stofberg, once again, welcome. Hetty Kutsia, welcome. Elsa B. Smith, welcome. Priscilla Fontaine, welcome. Lydia Stein, God bless you. Henry Bridger, it's good to have you. Rene Lopesha, uh, Rian Lopesha, sorry, Rian Lopesha, God bless you. John Dean Stein, God bless you, my brother. Willem Rabi, God bless you. Amen. Tanya De Beer, it's good to have you online. Hallelujah. Helene van der Westhuizen, good evening to you and God bless you. Well, that's all that I have for tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Thank you to all of you that like, comment and share. I appreciate every one of you. You must have a wonderful evening. This is Pastor Dominic. I'm signing out.